to Darren. Roll the montage. What? The montage. Roll it. Oh, uh, affirmative. Uh, one moment. Uh, I have the tape right here. <laughs> oh, no. Montage. It's Friday. Friday. Gotta get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to a weekend, weekend Friday. Pause, Mariam. Wrong tape. Oh, dear. <laughs> crafting RPG that feels a lot like Terraria with RPG elements. Oh, spot on, Gem. You play as a shipwrecked survivor trying to rebuild a life on the island you washed up on. There you'll do your classic mining and building to gather better items and become stronger. You'll also meet some friendly fellows who help you on your journey. They give you quests, which walk you through some of the early game and reveal things about the place you landed and how you got there. Jem, I like my Survivor friends, but I found the cutscenes really creepy. Yeah, they're not necessarily the, uh, prettiest. But I really like the story breadcrumbs and that you have tangible goals to achieve through quests. But it's not quite clear when you're supposed to branch out and make your own choices. For example, I got stuck for ages thinking that the next thing I was supposed to do was defeat the Miros, who are the local bullies. I spent so much time, money and resources trying to take them down, only to realise that they spawn endlessly, are too tough and you're not supposed to take them head on anyway. That was frustrating. Like, yeah, it's cool to go on that journey of discovery, but I'm a persistent person, Gem, and I spent way longer on that than I'd like to admit. Come on, how long? Too long. Eventually, I just gave up and went to the other side of the map. And you know what I found there? Was it dragons? Dragons. I know, we play the same game. <laughs> Not only do you get to fly dragons, but also roast enemies and raise your own baby dragons. This game has everything I need. Even better, you can assign a baby dragon or another animal to be your familiar and help you on your journey. Personally, I really liked the cat, which I named after my own cat, Pelican, because its eyes glowed in the dark, making it easier to see underground. Although it seems your familiar doesn't attack all enemy types, which was a real problem when I went into a brawl planning on just letting Pelican wipe them out. Ooh, that's what you get for sending a cat to do your dirty work. But figuring out that kind of stuff is one of the things I love most. There's this great sense of delight every time you discover something new. So many moments of, what is that? And oh yay, new things to mine. Just when I started feeling a bit tired of an area, something new and exciting would come my way. And there's a whole variety of different islands to explore that feel like entirely other worlds. Figuring things out can also be a bit of a headache, like when I built my factory on top of the hill, which also turned out to be a Yeti's home. It just kept throwing snowballs at me and I couldn't use my factory. You did it. I did. No, stop! Please, ma'am, I just want to use my factory. Did not enjoy discovering that. I also didn't love the controls. It felt a little clunky, and I was constantly doing things I didn't mean to because Z is used for basically every action. It's not a huge gripe, but it felt pretty noticeable to me. I did really like the fishing, though. That felt a bit like a typing game. For more difficult fish, you have to hit the right key at the right time. It added a bit of spice to my life. Oh, spicy gem. All in all, Aground is a delightful and expansive game that I could play for hours. It does like a tiny bit of polish, but you can actually play a demo of the game in browser on some websites. So I'm giving it five out of five rubber chickens. This is a great rainy day game for me that I think will be in my rotation for quite some time to come. So I'm also giving it five out of five rubber chickens.